Well, hi folks, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com, and welcome to my new segment uh, on From Flat to Fabulous in Photoshop. So the reason I'm doing this today is I have been getting a flood of just wonderful comments from people who've taken my full course called From Flat to Fabulous in Photoshop over on Kelby One, uh, where I start with an image like this that's like totally messed up, and I take you through the whole process to get it not messed up. And there's a whole bunch of them. There's landscapes, there's travel shots, there's portraits, there's everything. Um, and so so because that's going over so well, I thought, hey, I'll do another little segment to give you guys an idea for those of you who haven't taken the class yet. So this particular picture was taken back in 2008 with an old Nikon D300. And uh, this is a raw photo, but of course you can, um, you don't have to shoot in raw to be able to use the camera raw, which is part of Photoshop here. Um, you can also shoot in JPEG or TIFF. But in this case, it's a raw photo. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with fixing the lens problem first. This was shot at 18 millimeter, and you can see the whole building looks like it's kind of squunched at this end, and it's not that way, of course, in real life. We're going to start off over here in the six tab over the lens correction tab. And the first thing we're gonna to do to fix kind of the bowing, you know, the whole building's like it's bowing outward towards you and you'll, you'll see that more clearly in just a second, is we're gonna turn on enable profile corrections. This takes, um, well, what it does is it has camera raw look at your XF data, right? And so it knows what lens and what camera you used, and then it tries to apply a built-in profile to correct lens distortion. It works amazingly well, watch. All I'm gonna do is click this checkbox and look at the difference. So I'm gonna to toggle it on and off a few times so you can see, you see what I'm talking about when it's bowing out? Like look at, at the, the straightness of this column, for example, watch. See it was kind of bent, it was like bowing out, and the whole middle looks like it was bowing out. So that's, that's step one. But besides fixing the lens distortion, which you could do manually, you could do it manually, um, I think that you wanna do that because the next thing we're gonna do works better if you turn this on first, which is a brand new feature they added in Photoshop CC 2015.5, which is this little feature right here called like it's a uh, assisted upright, where basically you're going to tell Photoshop what's messed up in this photo and it'll correct it for you. But it doesn't happen like when you draw the first length. So what you do is you draw, say, let's start here and say, okay, this, you just drag it out and say, okay, that's kind of messed up right there and then you let go. And then you go, well, this is kind of crooked as well, right here, and it starts to fix it. Now, it doesn't look good yet. Then you go, all right, this is messed up over here. That's supposed to be straight. And then this is supposed to be straight right here. And look at that, it does a really good job, right? So that's one of the things about this. You, you kind of need to tell it where it's at. By the way, if you're a Lightroom user, this feature is in Lightroom, of course, as well, but they actually have some little added extra features that are that are that are nice in that version. But anyway, here we go. We kind of got 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 where we needed to be, but it kind of cut off part of the roof there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to scale, and I'm going to shrink the scale. So watch what happens when I shrink the scale. Right? See that roof actually was there, but because it it had to move so many things and transform the image. Uh, it automatically kind of crops it in like that. So I'm going to scale it down so we can fill these in ourselves or do what we want to do later. But I think it's important to have that that piece of roof in there, right? Now we can crop if we like to. We could just go to the crop tool at this point and just kind of crop it in. And I think we will, by the way. Um, well, by default, you notice how I dragged the the crop tool out and bang it it zoomed right in to where it's it's tight that's because there's a feature on here called constrain to image which when you drag out the crop tool it'll just jump right to make sure that all of the areas that would be blank on the edges are cut away so it constrains it to the full image if you want to turn that off which i do in this case because i'm going to let content aware fill fix some of these things on the sides i don't really want it quite this tight to the building and of course we don't want to cut off the roof, something like that. So I know I'm going to have some gaps. I'm going to have a gap in this corner, gap down here, and a gap up there. That's I'm going to have to live with that, but it was a little too tight when I chose constraint to image. So just to recap, I turned that constraint to image off so I could move the crop wherever I wanted to. Well, at this point, we can go ahead and hit open image, or we can, if you hit return, it'll lock it in and you can see where our missing areas are. Now. I'm gonna go back over here to 
the standard basic control, the very first tab. And if I look at the image, what would I say was messed up? Well, believe it or not, I think I need to go back to transform again because just looking at it and evaluating the picture now, it looks to me as though this area down here, it, it looks like it's kind of bowing out. I mean, not bowing. It looks like it is larger at the top than it is at the bottom. It doesn't look consistent. So I'm going to go back up here now that I look at this and I'm going to use the vertical slide, the vertical slider here, which lets you tip it one way or the other. But I think what we need to do is tip it a little this way. So the bottom and the top are consistent and it doesn't look like the roof is, is, you know, and if you look at the icon, it actually shows you, here's the problem. The base is smaller than the top or the top is smaller than the base. So you can fix it by moving it in that in the direction that you need to. I think that's actually quite a bit better. Let's look at the look at the difference just the lens correction makes. Pretty staggering. Okay. So I think we're pretty good there. I, I did have to go back and do that. All right. Now the rest of the stuff I will do in the basic panel over here. I lost my cursor. There it is. Okay. So what would I say was wrong with this photo? Well, technically I'm not clipping any highlights, right? I don't have a highlight warning up here. It's not turned white or anything. But that area back there looks like it could maybe use to bring back a little detail. So I'm going to lower the highlights. And you can see it brings back a little more detail in those clouds right back there. Then next, I'm going to increase the contrast because it looks kind of flat. Let's bring the contrast up. That looks pretty good. Now, to expand the tonal range of the photo, I'm going to hold the shift key and double click on whites, double click on blacks, and that expands the tonal range. And you can see that looks actually quite a bit better there. It looks a bit more contrasty and has a little bit more uh, depth to it. Then uh, clarity. Clarity is what I add to bring out texture. So I'm going to increase this. Anytime I want to bring texture out, I increase this. Now, if you go too far, things start to look a little funky, but you can go quite a, quite a ways with this. Now, if you look at what we've done here in making these, by making it more contrasty, it made the color of the columns very, I think, kind of yellowish. There's two ways to, to deal with this. You could move the temperature away from yellow, right towards blue, and see how that looks. But then I think it just kind of looks icky. I'm going to roll that back where it was by just double clicking. If you double click on any slider, it resets it to where it was. Then I'm going to go here to Vibrance and just take the Vibrance down a little bit. There we go. So it just doesn't, doesn't look so overly yellowish. And I think overall, we're pretty good there by increasing the contrast, fixing that sky a little bit, letting the blacks and whites, uh, set, setting them to expand their tonal range. If you shift double click on them, of course, it expands them out. We brought out texture and I thought it was a little too colorful, so I lowered the vibrance, just a recap of what we did there. And you might actually try the shadow slider, see what's kind of dark in there. And, and it would be in real life, but let's see if we want to bring out some of that detail or not. Does it look better or worse? Oh, maybe a little wouldn't hurt. All right. It's, it's all not a very exact science, right? It's kind of, does this look good? Does that look good? And I think we're overall in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead and open the image in Photoshop proper because we still have some things to do. First thing I'd like to do is, is fix this gap here, this tiny little gap in the corner, and this gap here. Let's flatten the image so you can see them in white. It'll be a little clearer where the problems are. So I'm going to get the magic wand tool. I'm going to click in that corner. I'm going to hold the shift key, which allows me to click someplace else. I'm going to hold the shift key and see if I can click right in that tiny little corner right there. Let's try again. If you can't reach it, we'll go right there. Hold the shift key. Boy, I can't seem to hit the spot. There we go. Now, to make what we're going to do next work better. Oh, it only got that one spot. I let go of the shift key. Here we go. Easy enough. There we go. To make these three spots I have selected work a little bit better and have the fill be a little more uh, accurate, we're going to go under the select menu under modify and choose expand. This takes the selection, expands it a little more into the photo and you get usually a better, click OK, a better result of what we're going to do next, which is go choose fill. Now you could fill with white, which it already is. You could fill with black, which would look stupid. Or you can choose content aware, which it will look at the image and try to make a smart determination. I'm concerned about this area being that close to the roof. We might either get nice sky or more roof. Down here, I think it'll be fine. Down in that corner, I think it'll be fine. Up there, 
We'll see. Here we go. We'll click OK. Wait for a moment. Hey, that's not bad. We got a, just a little tiny bit of roof. Well, we can get rid of that easy enough. Go get the spot healing brush and go, whoops, didn't mean to get that. Boom, done. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider that a success. I'm going to think that worked pretty well. So the picture's coming along. So if I look at it, and I always try to like stop and analyze it as I'm going and go, so what do I wish were different? Well, I wish these two poles weren't there. Nothing ruins the ruins. Get it? See what I did there? Sorry. Nothing ruins the ruins like lighting, modern day lighting, which of course it looks beautiful at night, but when you're standing in front of it, it looks like a not very ancient scene and these two big metal poles. So while I have uh, the tool in my hand, the spot uh, removal tool, I am going to, the spot healing brush, thank you. We are going to just click here and see if I can get rid of that by drawing straight down it and getting rid of its base and just let go and voila, it is gone. How about this one over here? Same thing, paint over the base, gone. Now, if it were me, and it is, um, I would get rid of the rest of the lights, make the brush a little larger, and let's just paint over the lights. Let's go right over this one and just get rid of it. Paint right over this one and get rid of it, and this one as well. And it's working pretty well. One reason it's working pretty well is the fact that there's a very obvious repeating pattern behind it of the stairs and it actually patches stuff like that pretty well. It sees the straight lines and the pattern and look at that we're able to paint this paint these uh, out pretty quickly and easily just by painting over them with the spot removal tool and it looks pretty good. You can see a couple little areas especially right where I just did where it didn't work so well but that's easy enough to fix. All right. And then I'm going to go get the rubber stamp tool to fix these areas that kind of didn't work real well here. You can kind of see where it kind of just smeared. I'm just going to option click. I'm going to option click on a piece of the stair that looks good right there. I'm going to put my cursor option click on Mac, alt click on Windows. I'm going to move over and paint. So one of the things this does, I'm going to kind of show you over here. It shows you a preview of what you're about to paint inside the little circle. So I'm going to move it and make it sure it's a straight line right here and just paint over that piece right there so it's kind of gone. And we could paint maybe a little of that right there. One click. And maybe some of this darker stuff right here, right there, so you don't really see that. I don't want to ruin the ruins. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go, right there. And maybe a little more right on those stairs right there. That pretty much, I mean, we could work a little longer on that. I won't put you through that. Oh, also, this top part of the stair, I think we have to make the brush smaller because I don't want to copy a whole bunch of other junk, but right there needs a little bit of work. Okay, and you could spend a few more minutes there. Also, you can see where I missed part of the, uh, or copied part of the base of uh, one of the lights or the stand, so let's get rid of that. That worked fairly well, and I missed a little bit right here as well. Get rid of that and some of that right there. So you could probably take another minute or two to really get that on the money. And so let's see, we're well, we're, we're well on our way here. This really actually looks pretty good. And let's see if there's anything else that we wanna do. Actually, I think, well, of course, we could add some more contrast. Let's try this and see how it works. Let's duplicate the layer and we're gonna use a blend mode. So there's two blend modes that add contrast. One is overlay, which adds a lot of contrast, and one called soft light that adds a little bit of contrast. Let's try soft light first and see what that looks like. Okay, that added some nice contrast. At the same time, it also added a lot of the yellowish color we were trying to get away from. So here's what you can do. You can go uh, image adjustments and choose to desaturate it right down here, desaturate, which will take the color out of that. So it'll make the duplicate layer black and white, but you still get the soft light effect at the top. Or if you switch to overlay, it becomes more intense. So there's overlay and there's soft light. And I think we go with soft light, but maybe not at 100%. So consider the opacity like your amount control. Here's zero, there's 100 right there. And I think something in between maybe 50 or 60 might be okay to kind of give us a little oomph to the photo. 
and then we can flatten those at this point because I think we're pretty much done. I think at this point what it really needs is a little bit of sharpening. Let's go out of the filter menu under sharpening and choose unsharp mask. Now when I say a little bit of sharpening what I really mean is this thing needs a ton of sharpening. We're going to sharpen it to death. So I'm going to go to 120, 1.5 which is pretty high and a threshold of zero. Because when you have things like this that have a lot of edges and a lot of texture, they can take a tremendous amount of sharpening. Normally, I would not sharpen at 1.5. I usually pretty much leave it at 1.1. If I want to crank it up, I might go to 1.2. Uh, but in this case, we're at 120%, 1.5 and 0. Just a lot, lot, lot of sharpening. And there, there you go. So I think we're pretty good right there in kind of restoring the old... The old uh, I wouldn't call it a building at this point, the ruins. So let's go look at where we started. Let's go back to the original photo and then let's set it back to where we started to the previous conversion. I'm sorry, to the camera raw defaults. And there you can see where we started, cutting off part of the roof and all, and then where we ended. And if you think this thing is a little too punchy, it might, is it a little too punchy? It could be just a tad too punchy. Uh, you could always go to filter, camera raw filter, and just go to the contrast and pull it off just a little bit. Maybe like that, just to kind of keep it from being overly punchy. There we go. I think that looks a little better. All right, from there to there. Again, I, I hope that you found this helpful. I hope you followed along, and I hope that you will go right now and take my class call from Flat to Fabulous in Photoshop. I do like 12 of these projects from beginning to end. Some really complicated, some really, really easy. But I think the thing about them is you're not just learning how to fix this photo. You're learning Photoshop. You're learning some really neat things that you will be able to pull out and use on different projects. And I think that's what makes these, these from Flat to Fabulous is you know, really helpful and useful and, and why I enjoy teaching them so much. If you're not a Kelby One member, take the 10-day free trial. You can watch this course right now. You can download the practice files. You can do the whole thing. And I hope you'll have the same experience that I've heard from so many people that, that it was really helpful to them in their Photoshop journey. Well, thank you guys again. Thanks for stopping by the blog here. Thanks for all your support, kind words, and good wishes. And we'll catch you guys next time. Take care.